Hello, welcome to this presentation of Five Secrets to Content Marketing. My name is Ron Weber. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Trinet Internet Solutions. We're based in Southern California and Irvine, California. We also have offices in Dallas and Washington, D.C. And you can reach me at ron.weber at trinetsolutions.com. And I've got to I'll repeat that at the end of the presentation as well. Well, I'm super excited to be here today to talk about content marketing. So let's start first with an introduction. What is content marketing? <clears throat> content at least says between 80 to 90 percent of U.S. businesses use content for marketing in a strategic fashion. Adweek says a third of marketers believe content will be the most important tactic that they use this year. So let's talk about content marketing. Well, content marketing, according to the Content Marketing Institute, is a strategic approach focused on creating and distributing valuable, relevant, and consistent content to attract and retain a clearly defined audience, and ultimately, to drive profitable customer action. So what is the purpose of content marketing? It's to change or enhance consumer behavior. And you can think of it as an ongoing process that is best integrated into your overall marketing strategy, it focuses on owning the media, not renting it, and creating valuable uh, pieces of content that are going to bring prospects and customers back time and time again. It's the art of communicating with your customers and prospects without selling, selling your value to the consumer and not just a product or service, delivering information that makes your buyer more intelligent, providing ongoing valuable information to buyers that makes your business a thought leader. And this is what leads to business and loyalty. So I'm going to talk about five key secrets to content marketing. The first is strategy and planning. The second is storytelling. The third, education. The fourth, connectedness. And the fifth is transparency. So let's start first with strategy and planning. So content marketing strategy is not the same as content strategy. They're two different things. Content marketing strategy is drawing and developing the larger story that an organization tells versus content strategy is the means of how you're going to tell your story on the particular platform. So strategy, planning, and goal setting. So some key things to think about as you prepare your content uh, marketing approach and strategy is to start first with basics. Who is your customer? Where do they live? What do they look like? Where are your customers and how will they find you? This is perhaps the most important question because this is going to help determine not only what the messaging is, but which platform is the most appropriate platform to reach your specific customer. Certain, for example, social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, they they attract different types of customers and prospects different types of people different demographics visit those different platforms so in order to know which ones you should be using you have to start first with who is the customer and what are their likes dislikes so that's why that is your number one question to answer first the second is what problems exist in your industry? What pain points? What problem does your product or your service or your company solve, either for the consumer or for that particular industry? Second most important question to answer. The third is create a plan. Random acts of social media are just not effective. You have to be strategic about how you message and where you message. Number four, create a vision. How do you solve a problem or address a pain point your customers have? And how, is, how does your product or service impact your customer? Number five, set strategic goals. What will success look like to you? Number six, create a publishing plan. And number seven, measure the results, rinse and repeat. So what problems, first of all, exist in your industry or, or your particular niche? How does your product or company help to solve those problems? Once you can articulate what the problems are in your niche industry and paint a clear picture of how you help to solve them, your consumers, customers will make a connection between the two. 
The second is a priority to today's consumer is that they want to know how the products they are buying are benefiting the people who make them. Next, create a plan and document it. I mentioned earlier random acts of social media are not effective in getting your customers engaged with you and your product. A one-off post, a one-off uh, video is not enough. There has to be a consistent message and there needs to be a consistent story to be told. Secondly, without a clearly identified goal and direction for your content marketing efforts, your business will progress at a much slower pace than it would without a solid plan in place. Third, 60% of marketers say a documented plan increases their effectiveness. As the old saying goes, if you don't have a plan or you don't have a direction to go, any, any path will take you there. But of course, we want to be very intentional about how we do our marketing so that we can measure it and we can get the maximum results for our businesses and our organizations. So create a vision. Who are your customers? How will they find you? The first step to do that is to create a buyer persona. What is a buyer persona? It's a profile of the target that you're trying to reach that gives you a, an overview of who they are, what are their age, if they have a specific age group, do they have a specific demographic, uh, do they have a, are they located in a specific geographic area. So gathering information about your current and potential targets and then being able to identify groups of targets more specifically in terms of geography, demographics and other will really help you when it comes time to put your messaging in place because the great feature of social media platforms is that you can now dial in those types of characteristics very uh, very uh, well and so the ability to first of all identify those is going to help you with your messaging it's going to help you with your platform and it's going to help you with your targeting second your goal is to distinguish the most obvious and important characteristics and that ha that could be what the kind of prospect is what industry are they in, are they in what areas do they frequent on the internet Three, this allows you to craft targeted content that resonates with their needs. So define is next. Develop your personas that reflect your target audience. So I've talked about demographic profile, age, gender, income, education level, marital status, children. Second is employment information. What industry is it? Which, which, which uh, sub area within the industry? What's the role within the organization? What's their level of seniority? Third, consumption, uh, their online search habits, their social networks that they frequent, the books and newspapers and other types of uh, content that they might consume. Four is key interests, topics that your organization has to offer and the perks that, that, that perks the needs of the personas you're trying to reach. Next is listen. Anticipate your audience's needs and motivation and from a user experience, think about what services and benefits your consumers are looking for. First off, what experience are they expecting from your business? And second, anticipate objections. What, why would the person perhaps not want your product or service? And make sure you address it in your presentation and in your content. Next, address. Understand your audience's pain points and offer value that helps to solve those. Second, provide solutions. How will your services resolve a problem or address a pain point? It's important that you demonstrate you've been thinking about their problem and have a solution that you've thought through. Number three, reflect the values and the goals, which are the flip side of pain points. What does your audience really value? What will get them excited to endorse and buy your product? And third, what are they trying to accomplish with this choice of product? Next, communicate. Keep your message simple, concise, relevant, and personal. One, simplicity is key. Clarity of message is, is really the cornerstone of effective content writing. A simple structure and a clear plan make for the most compelling posts, articles, and content pieces. Second, conciseness. Most readers are looking for useful insight that they can easily digest in one sitting. The best Blog posts, Facebook posts are usually 500 to 1,000 words in length at, at the most. Third, 
make sure it's relevant. Make sure that the post has relevance to your target audience, that it resolves, informs, or entertains. And as well, number four, make it personal. For instance, offer up personal recipes or a personal viewpoint. Next, I'm going to talk about the audience-based approach because this really goes hand-in-hand -hand with personas. And what the audience-based approach is really about is, is converting those ideas, those wants and desires that are characteristic of the different personas that you're trying to target and turning them into a sequence of steps that you can guide your visitor through from an initial contact at a blog post to perhaps ultimately purchasing a product or perhaps it's a, uh, a, a content piece of a video or an article that ultimately you're using to get that individual to click through and perhaps buy or sign up for an email or tell a friend. Those are all examples of action pathways. First step, identify the specific personas that you're trying to reach. In this, uh, in this example, we see personas for customers, partners, prospects, and investors. Next, create what are called action pathways. And action pathways are nothing more than an intentional sequence of steps that takes a visitor from an initial starting point. And in this example, we see the starting points begin at the home page of a website could just as easily be an email, could be a Facebook post, could be a, uh, a Pinterest post, uh, an Instagram. The concept is the same. You have a starting point. You guide someone to click to a next step that ultimately leads to a call to action. So in this example, we have an existing customer starting at the home page. They see new announcements. They see a current offer. And then a call to action might be to join the social community. A prospect might start at the same home page and uh, we guide them along a pathway to browse products, see a current offer, purchase, and then send them to a thank you email. A partner might start first at a partner page, uh, be enticed to become a partner, and once they've completed that call to action, we send them a thank you email. An investor might go to an investor page, view an annual report, and request an investor packet. Again, each of these are intentional pathways that guide a visitor from an initial interaction, a digital interaction point, to a completion point along that digital pathway that we can track, measure, and tune. Next, set strategic goals. What will success look like for you? So for example, uh, a, call, a uh, a goal might be 25 people will download my free report when they see it in my Twitter feed. Uh, a second one, I'll generate five email newsletter signups from my Facebook fan page. Or my goal is to generate five new leads a week from using Google AdWords and attracting potential clients to my website. By setting measurable goals, you'll have a benchmark with which to compare your progress. Next, create a publishing plan, not just a single not just publishing a single article, but a sequence of articles that tell a story. It takes time to build up trust and establish an online relationship, so consistency and regularly posting are key. So it's important to earn trust by posting, publishing regularly, and providing great content. Third, creating a solid publishing plan helps to give you a direction and lets your audience know what they can expect. Then, measure results, rinse and repeat. Check your metrics and your analytics regularly. Find out what is working best for your message and ramp up your efforts for that site or platform. And repeat these efforts that you see are making a difference. Let's take a look at an example here of strategy and planning and action for Food for Life. Food for Life uh, markets a variety of uh, food products, uh, breads and, and other health products. Uh, one of their uh, successful products is uh, Ezekiel bread. So when Food for Life began to market Ezekiel sprouted grain bread, they created a content marketing phenomenon that led up to the launch of the product. And so why was this strategy successful? Well, first off, it built anticipation. It targeted various audience demographics. They mastered their audience dynamic and kept them intrigued. They promoted their bread in clever and innovative ways, and they combined marketing expertise from a variety of places. 
so first off, Food for Life's marketing strategy really exemplified the importance of creating a carefully thought out marketing plan. They were very strategic and persistent in marketing the bread. Secondly, the hype that surrounded the bread was directly in response to their content marketing strategy. And without the sol a solid strategy and plan, the bread would not have uh, or the launch of this particular product would not have garnered as much attention as it did. So their strategy, planning, goals, and execution paid off. Food for Life has become a go-to bread for those who prefer to eat gluten and wheat-free. And their email growth increased from almost 2,000 to over 20,000. Their average open rate is 30%, which is above the 17% industry standard. Next, storytelling. Here's a great quote from Seth Godin. He says, marketing is no longer about the stuff you make. It's about the stories you tell. So with storytelling, you want to tell an inspiring story, whether it's about your commitment to sustainable sourcing, social initiatives, or the people behind your brand and mission that you want to share with your audience. Second, don't talk about yourself all the time, but talk about what the reader cares about. Third, make an informative and unique profile. Four, have the courage to speak out loud and take a stand. Five, it's important to share your unique perspectives with the world in order to stand out as unique. And six, create an adventure. So visual content is, is perhaps one of the most powerful tools for increasing engagement, shares, responses, and more. And of course, it can include anything from videos to slideshows, images, PowerPoints, and especially infographics. Third, consider uh, visual content that in, in visual content 93 percent of communication is nonverbal and people process visuals 60,000 times faster than text. Third, clip art photography illustrations, screenshots, and attractive images add punch and power to your content. And number four, infographics are of course a very powerful tool to intrigue your audience and to bring boring data to life. So if you have to force your audience to see the value, it won't work. So make sure you're creating content that readers can learn from, that you show the application of knowledge, because that to them is valuable. And make sure you make available downloadable resource books, case studies, tutorials, and guides. Second, use your buyer persona to know your audience and understand how your readers prefer to discover, consume, and act on content. And third, make sure to consistently think about, create, and post new content. So let's look at this example of storytelling in action, which has to do with Burt's Bees. And here we see the story of Burt's Bees, how a little insect inspired us. The success and, and the uh, renown of Burt's Bees leverage, they leveraged content marketing by telling the story of Burt, one of the co-founders of Burt's Bees. And they used the image of Burt and his backstory to create a sense of culture and to personalize the business. And they, this is an example of another content piece where you can see an article about being wild for bees. And you can meet the bees, you can learn about nutritious and delicious foods that wouldn't exist without bees. And then, of course, you can see how Burt's supports uh, bees. And, uh, and it talks about a world without bees is unimaginable. We won't let it happen. So it's presented, it presents the company as more than just a beeswax product uh, with organic lip balms. It, it presents Burt's Bees uh, emission, and it's, you can, it's easily identifiable and makes the company personable to the consumer. Another example I want to uh, touch on is Lego, and I love to talk about Lego. Um, my eight-year-old son is just uh, enjoys playing with Legos so much. So, it uh, so as a result of that, I spend a lot of time with Legos as well. So, Lego faced a problem that many brands encounter. Other companies started copying their product, and consumers were going elsewhere. And so, what they did is they created a content marketing media empire based around a product that really had nothing to do with media but they were exceptional at using media to promote it. They created an inventive online story that captivated the minds of their target audience, kids, and they mastered their audience 
studied their habits, and planned their storytelling strategy based off their data. They created a virtual world for kids. They told their story through microsites, mini-series, Lego Club magazines, Lego ID, Lego Click, which is a community platform, My Lego Network, a successful movie, short YouTube videos, and many more. And each of these platforms exemplifies content marketing the Lego story. They told the story of their brand through visual online content, and it worked. They successfully created an online adventure for kids that captivated them and stood out amongst competing brands and provided a platform for launching and telling the story about each of their products. Let's talk next about education. Jessica Rubino from New Hope Network has a great quote, says, the strongest brands aren't just product making machines. They are go-to resources that can help consumers with everything from healthy cooking to finding the right supplements to practicing meditation or getting involved in their communities and the things they are passionate about. Education is such a key to product and brand differentiation and it's especially relevant if you're talking about natural products or, or for that matter any kind of product or service. So second, educate on your expertise. And third, be a lifestyle resource. Here's an example from Ella's Kitchen. Education was key to product and brand differentiation. And here's an example of how they added an, an, an entire section on sustainability to their website to show who they are, their global footprint, their history, and the founder's message, and even provided some key policy documents that shows how their organization cares. So they have a, a policy document on material issues and opportunities, consumers' right to know climate change, human rights, and their greenhouse gas and water footprint. So the better informed your audience is on your company and products, the more likely they are to purchase something. Second, inform them on the importance of natural products and key elements to look for when picking a brand. There's a great quote there from Kashi. It talks about, we make our foods with simple, wholesome ingredients in everything we believe. Next, there's important considerations to educate your audience in the natural products industry. First are supplements. You can talk about safety and effectiveness. Second, personal care. You can talk about ingredient purity and performance. And third, in the food area, you can address special diets, food safety, and food conditions. For whatever product categories you're talking about, your responsibility is to educate your audience on quality, and on sourcing. And education on the National Products Channel is really essential to gain and retain customers. Without it, people will not trust your brand. Here's an example article on biodynamic farming. Next, be a lifestyle resource. Strong brands don't just pr produce things. They are a go-to source for new and helpful content. And consumers view brands as valuable and trustworthy when they can rely on them for good quality products and information. Here's a post uh, from late July where you can see what their difference is, late July snacks. You can see their ingredients. Next, appeal to your uh, target audience by sending out content that they are passionate about. Chances are your company's passions are similar to your target consumers. Second, Giving out free content will give you great returns and generate an image for your business as experts in your field. So again, samples are uh, a very powerful way of doing that. And here's an example of how Real Purity uses samples. Next, let's talk about education in action and focus on the Honest Company. They're known for their eco-friendly baby and household products. The company really owes their success to sharing informative content on their website and social media to their target audience. And here's a, a post uh, regarding organic green tea powder extract. In sharing their knowledge about eco-friendly products, they've established themselves as experts in their field. You can see a post to the right about chemical regulation, the good, the bad, and the future. Number four, not only are they putting out great content, but they're educating their audience and generating brand trust, ultimately creating an incentive to purchase their product. 
Here's another example of how the Honest Company featured a post on organic bedding and where to buy the best kind. They don't sell organic bedding, however, they often feature environmentally friendly products produced by other companies. Again, this is an example of how a post can build on a company's reputation. Rather than simply promoting their own products, they leverage their content marketing platforms to feature content that's relevant to their target audience. So by presenting organic, environmentally friendly products from other companies, The Honest Company has positioned itself as a sincere, knowledgeable, and trustworthy purveyor of baby-safe products. Here is an example of handmade bear softies. Now let's talk about some more education in action. Let's touch on Whole Foods Market. Whole Foods is another company that nurtures customer loyalty through education. They actually create, create separate social media accounts for their different locations across the, the country. And they study and master their audience demographics in different locations. And this is what helped them to understand what their audience wants to hear from the different location accounts. So here's an example of a, um, of a uh, page for a specific location, Whole Foods Market in Brea, California. Here's one for Orange County in general. So Whole Foods began posting tips, recipes, and other informative content that engaged their audience. They found that educating their audience gave them the best results, increasing their consumers' brand loyalty. So here's a post on sorghum, for example. This separates them from other grocery stores and uh, creates customer loyalty unlike any other grocery store. So here's an example of a post that talks about promoting the health of stakeholders through healthy eating education. Let's talk next about connectedness. Uh, brands might be good alone, but they're better when connected. And so the Lego analogy to connectedness is just like all Lego pieces work perfectly together to make something bigger than the individual parts. Connectedness works for a brand by focusing on greater good, building and evolving offerings together. By connecting people via branded interactions across channels, mobile, social, online, and offline, brands can create something better together with their customers than alone. Connectedness is about knowing where the people are, what they're saying, how they're behaving, and what would make their lives better? Going beyond just knowing, fostering and being part of a conversation in real time. Being aware of and active in their networks and agile within them. So useful, desirable, and usable. That's connectedness. So reflect, if I didn't work here, would I care about this article or would I care about this post? As a rule of thumb, Spend less than 20% of your social media time on self-promo talk. Be proactive and engaging. Take the opportunity to be proactive with your target audience prior to events by engaging with them on social media. Here's a great example of how Marishan, a food noodle company, tied in with the Pokemon craze to create a post that appeals to their uh, particular target audience. So generate shareable content, respond, engagement is a two-way communication, build a tribe or community, and provide excellent customer service. Here's an example uh, post from Marishan. I would just be the happiest person to be able to attend Marishan Warts and receive seven years of delicious education. And the response is 500 points to your house. Ask yourself, if I didn't work here, why would I care about this? So make sure your postings are consistent, valuable, provide relevant information that retains customers over time, meaning creating both proactive and reactive content. So show what your business has to offer and what your audience is interested in right now. And your content needs to be worthy of sharing, which means it needs to entertain, inform, and captivate your target audience. Next, be proactive and engaging. Take the time to be proactive prior to an event. Appeal to the set of values of those attending the event. Connect with strategic hashtags and create content that will stimulate questions and conversations. And show that you care. Here's an example of a post to promote a concert, a warped tour ticket. 
So quality is always better than quantity. It's better to have a thousand online connections who read, share, and talk about your content with their own audiences than 10,000 connections who disappear after connecting with you once. Next, publish content that others want to talk about. They will share it with their audience. Sharing and discussion opens new entry points for search engines like Google to find it in keyword searches. And it provides more ways for people to find you. Next, social media strategy. It can take a lot of time to create original content, so make it a goal that each content piece should be repurposed three or four different ways. Build up content. So allow your content to build up over time, extract social media posts whenever you can, and add graphics to freshen up the piece. Use a top-down approach. Break down larger content pieces, articles, longer videos, into shorter, more digestible, smaller pieces to post. And uh, recall popular blog posts and refresh them for something current and trending. If you had a blog post that was very popular, uh, it, it makes a lot of sense to repost that. If you create a piece of content, you need a call to action. Make sure that whatever content you're creating, whatever article, whatever post, be thinking about driving the viewer to a specific call to action. Uh, example, sign up for notifications about new videos, book a visit, download a recipe, buy a product, request a sample. Make sure you always have calls to action. And then create a conversion strategy. So lead a target to subscribe to newsletters, coupons, recipes, purchase online if appropriate. Ideally, you want readers to share your article and to share it with others, share it with their friends. And it's crucial that every content piece that you create has a call to action. If it doesn't, you're not effectively marketing your content and you're simply just entertaining web users. Make sure you're not skipping the social in social media. Remember, it's a two-way conversation. And don't trust your brand social media messaging to high school interns. It needs, you need to have professional communicators that are messaging. Hire a communications professional to represent your company or uh, hire a company to handle it for you. It requires listening and less talking and make sure you read your target audience's online content and join discussions to learn about what's important to them. What you want to do is build a tribe or a community. Some people believe that of course creating a tribe of passionate followers means putting up a Facebook pan fan page and begging your fans for likes. That's not the right approach. It's not possible to create an instant community. It takes time to develop relationships. So communities are based on trust, and you can earn trust through regular communication. Show up regularly, provide awesome content on a regular basis. Social media contacts, contacts start out in the community or opportunity zone with the ultimate goal of leading them to become loyal, paying customers. Create content and spark conversations that add value rather than clutter to their lives. Don't just push content and disappear. Also, don't ignore audience presence online. You wouldn't do that in person. Make sure you're engaging with your audience. This will help you to build your community. Next, customer service. Building relationships and the customer service aspect of that can be a very important part of your social media marketing strategy and success. If customers trust you will respond to their needs, they will become more likely to purchase something and become repeat customers. This all ties back to engaging in a two-way conversation. Makes your brand approachable and trustworthy, as loyal customers are key to business success. Make sure they can trust that you are loyal to them too. So make sure you're investing uh, a portion of your time into responding to online users with questions, concerns about your product. Let them know you care and maintain an appropriate staffing to manage that message volume so that you don't have gaps in your response time. Here's a ex great example of connectedness in action with Nike. Of course, they're exemplary, exemplary for their customer service. They actually created a separate Twitter account for Nike support. It gave customers a quick and easy way to reach out to Nike and 
they can expect a response back instead of bombarding Nike's main social media accounts with user specific content it created a place for conversation flow and for trust to be built and it allows Nike to be accessible to customers so here's an example of a uh, of what that looks like for Nike support and with careful attention and focus to this account they've been able to respond to a large number of customers at a fast pace while being helpful and genuine and they've made it very clear that they are there for their customers this is a huge selling point and it's a major reason why Nike has such loyal customers and continues to thrive as a major sportswear empire and you can see some example of posts having to do with the Nike Plus fuel band Next example of connectedness and power is Core Power Yoga. Core Power's marketing strategy shows the benefits of creating relationships with your customers. Trevor Tice, the founder of Core Power Yoga, decided not to use television, printed ads, or other means to promote his company. He focused primarily on social networks to promote awareness and establish relationships with customers and potential customers. So here you see the example of a post which says, have the day off round up some friends and come take a class using online word of mouth core power yoga attracted target audiences and was able to share content that they and their customers believed in their social media strategy paid off sales went from 6.5 million in 27 to 2007 to 23 million in 2010 and Core Power Yoga is now the largest yoga chain in the United States and continues to post useful content for their audience. Here's an example of a fun post which says the question isn't if I will do yoga today, it's how many Core Power Yoga classes I will go to today. Next, let's talk about transparency. The Business Dictionary defines transparency as a lack of hidden agendas or conditions accompanied by the availability of full information required for collaboration, cooperation, and collective decision making. So be transparent. Educate your customers so that they can make better decisions. Be genuine. Make doing the right thing part of your culture. Make sure you're post, posting unfiltered reviews and learn from your critics. You are responsible for providing your customers with material to make informative purchasing decisions. So talk about everything around your product and your service and what your company does that fits the value of your customers. Here's a great quote from Roy Disney that, is, that says it's not hard to make decisions once you know what your values are. So address issues in your industry, prove that your business doesn't face those issues, or more importantly, prove how your business has overcome those issues. Next, if your company does something wrong or goes against you or your customer's core values, own up to it and fix your mistake. Work towards the greater good in your industry. Set the bar high. Be the, companies that com be the company that competitors strive to be and be transparent and honest this is what helps to create trust and loyalty audiences know when a company is being genuine genuine content is a reflection of your business and the products that you sell let your content prove the importance of what you do and strive to accomplish here's the definition of genuine real authentic natural make doing the right thing part of your culture you need to believe your customers will appeal to companies that do what is right, not what is profitable. Speak out about issues in your industry and show your audience that you care. And also, make sure you have a unique perspective that makes your business unique and stand out. Conscious consuming is what drives purchases, and customers are conscious of companies that share their values. The most successful brands keep their mission at the front of their mind in everything they do. Finally, sharing your company's mission is a great way to appeal to your audience. Here is an example of how Ben & Jerry's posts their statement of mission online, product, economic, and social. Here's a great example of how Patagonia gets their mission statement and, and shares their mission statement. 
they decided to reduce any negative social and environmental impacts they had while creating their merchandise. So unlike their top competitors, they did not want to catch their consumers off guard by un environmentally unfriendly tactics. So as a result, they launched their Footprint Chronicles. So whenever a customer purchases something off their website, they have access to see the exact process and steps that it took to create their merchandise, from textile mills to factories to farms. Patagonia's openness and transparency with their audience created a trustworthy and exemplary business model. Not only does it hold them responsible for their actions, but it's also allowed them to improve their internal process. They provide customers with the facts, and as a result, customers rely on them and have an incentive to purchase from them. Here's where we make our products and why, and here's packaging and merchandising policy. So the benefits, uh, there's real benefits to posting unfiltered reviews. Conscious consumers drive purchases, and consumers are conscious of brands that are honest and transparent about their products so they can make educated purchases. This is why reviews, and in particular unfiltered reviews from real customers, can be a powerful tool. And don't be afraid of bad reviews because they're actually golden opportunities. Thank the reviewer, write in a human voice, if necessary, apologize, address issues, and consider future readers. Not only will customers trust the negative reviews, but they'll also trust the positive ones. Reviews are a push in the right direction to purchase something, so make sure your customers can trust that reviews are honest and accurately represent your company. Encourage your customers to give a review. You could even incentivize them. Here's an example of a review, a perfect all-around jacket for the Northwest. Learn from your critics. Always look at criticism as an opportunity to improve. Chances are there are more people that feel the same way as the critic does. Your audience will appreciate change in a better direction. They'll believe in your company because of your ability to take criticism and use it as a strength. And conscious decisions to address consumer perceptions help to drive purchases. Here's an example of uh, Boloco, uh, globally inspired burritos. So when something goes wrong, using social media to remedy the situation is a gift, says Allison Doyle, the director of marketing. We're not perfect, and we make mistakes. Having the opportunity to explain ourselves or make it right gives us a chance to engage with someone who otherwise might not come back. More on transparency and another example with respect to Whole Foods Market. They faced a lot of criticism about mislabeling their products as non-GMO. Soon after, transparency became a top priority for them. So they set a goal that by 2018 they would have all of their non-GMO marked products re-verified. Whole Foods' goal is to encourage industry-wide GMO transparency. And here's a post that talks about their goal and their, what they want to accomplish in terms of transparency. They wanted to encourage manufacturers and distributors to ask the questions that need to be asked. They took their criticism and created a positive movement from it. And this helped to restore customers' faith in their business and helped them to recast themselves as an honest, reliable company. Here's GMO transparency. Here's a one-year update. So now let's wrap it all up. What are the five key points? Well, the first one is strategy and planning. The second is storytelling. The third is education. The fourth is connectedness. And the fifth is transparency. Those are the five keys to content marketing. Some content references that I have here so you can uh, follow these up uh, for your own benefit. And finally, my name, again, Ron Weber. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Trinet Internet Solutions. We're based in Irvine, California. My email address is ron.weber at trinetsolutions.com. It's been a pleasure to present you these five key content marketing tips. Have a great day.